Okay, you probably won't be watching these in sequence, so I ended my last video talking about an employee that we could see was underperforming, didn't want to be in the entrepreneurial endeavor anymore, and kind of out of the blue handed in her resignation papers, just said, no, I don't want to do this. And it was absolutely okay with the entrepreneur. And I was on the road. A woman in Switzerland saw the work that I do. She was a workshop junkie. When she came to my class in Zurich, Switzerland, uh, through an ad that I put in a paper, she finished the weekend and she said, this doesn't exist. And I said, I don't know what you mean. She said, what you're doing is what everybody's looking for. What you're doing is so unique. She said, I have done everything. The only reason I did this seminar is because I'm a seminar junkie and I've been without seminars for too long. And I, and I just wanted to do a weekend in something that was moving towards enlightenment. She said, I want to see if I can organize you. And I said, okay. So we set off for the States, uh, the West Coast. Of, we uh, made some mistakes. The business didn't do that well uh, just because of some primary, because we didn't stop basically our business, which I'm going to talk about stopping your world from time to time. Just say, wait, 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 wait. Do we move here or do we stay here? Do we look and see what's going on or do we try to create, you know what I mean? You have to stop and look. Bigger or smaller, bigger or smaller, bigger or smaller. Here, there. You have to stop and look at these things if you're a traveling man. But we had worked together for six months, I think. And uh, I had gone off to teach for my mentor, came back, and uh, we were having lunch, and she started crying, and I said, what's up? She said, I don't want to work for you anymore. I said, oh, cool. We work with you. She, we were partners. It wasn't for me. It was with me. And I said, well, that's cool. And it kind of stopped her, and she said, no, I just said I don't want to work with you anymore. I said, yeah, I know. I know what he said. And she said, but, but if I'm not working for you, you won't have an organizer. You won't have anybody to look out for you. I said, yeah, I know. And she's kind of like, she said, I don't get it. And I said, look, if you don't want to work with me, I don't want you working with me. You know what I mean? If this is time for you to go, then go. It's that simple. My life is that simple. This game is going to go how this game goes. If I get wrapped up in one or two people staying around the game and creating something for me, I it's going to be madness. It's going to be stupidity. I have to look and see. And when somebody says, I don't want to work for you, I gotta let him go. When I was in practice, there was a gal that worked for me, and although she was extremely organized and efficient, what I noticed was that my numbers were falling off. I wasn't seeing as many patients, and uh, she would worked about two weeks. I gave her two weeks severance pay, and on a Saturday, I said to her, "Man, it's time to go." So what? I said, "It's time to go. It's not working out." And this I'd learned from David Singer, who was a chiropractor, uh, chiropractor consultant. And he used mainly Scientology in his consulting stuff, which is good business stuff. And you just say, it's not working out. It's just not working out. It's just not working out. And they'll get hysterical, some of them, as she did. I want to know exactly what happened. And I'd kept stats. I said, you were late. You did this. You did this. I said, the stats are there. I said, it's just not working out. Uh, it got, I could say a little ugly, but it got interesting, I guess. I was taking before the... Texas Employment Commission's Board for unlawful firing, something stupid like that, you know, what people can do nowadays, even though it had been less than six weeks and I had given her severance pay, she still seemed to be vindictive uh, about the whole thing, but the point was, she was gone, it cost me a little bit of my time and she was gone, and my practice started to flourish again, because I got somebody behind the front desk who really liked patients and who loved me and who wanted my business to do well, it didn't quite describe this other gal. So, uh, ruthlessness in your own business is important. Uh, your own happiness is important in your own business. If those are not important to you, then you're listening to the wrong series. <laughs> you need to find somebody else to listen to, because in my own business, I want to have fun. If I can't do that, there's not much else that motivates me. Drives my wife a little mad, but madness is fun sometimes. www.micpeakperformance.com